Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAPS at Green Booklet Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 18, Questions 60 to 61. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at capacitors. The, I guess the, the good and bad thing about this unit is, uh, well, the good thing is you don't have to know anything about capacitors to answer this question. All you have to know is how to manipulate some simple mathematics. The bad thing is um, it would help if you actually knew a lot about capacitors because in future GAMSAT exams, they might ask you questions a bit more challenging than the ones presented here about capacitors. So before we dive into the unit, I think it's important we discuss what capacitors are. So capacitors, um, they store energy by holding apart pairs of opposite charges. So I have an example design here. This is the simplest design. Um, so it's this parallel plate capacitor. So we have here a simple capacitor with parallel plates consisting of two metal plates with a dielectric, which is just an insulator. It could be ceramic, plastic, air. Um, and it's insulated, it's a gap between the two plates. So we see here electrons are placed onto one plate. And then an equal amount of electrons are removed from the other plate. And it's a nice way of storing energy. So if you were to attach, say, a battery here, um, you can either transfer electrons from the battery or remove electrons from the battery or add so add or remove electrons from that battery. So it's a, it's a very, very simple form of storing energy and it's used in pretty much everything we know and we use today. So this unit, it requires you to use the equation for charge, which is Q, which equals capacitance times the voltage. Um, so we need to understand that um, the capacitance of the two parts and the voltage differences are obviously um, presented here in the unit. So if we take a look at question 60, we're asked after being fully charged and before the two parts were joined, C1 carried a charge of. So we're looking for charge. So if we just write down our known values for C1, so our capacitance for C1, so capacitance equals it says here 0 0.05 microfarads, and our voltage for C1, or I guess C1 and C2, are both going to be 0 0.4 volts. So first, it's important to note that the answer isn't represented in micro uh, coulombs, so it's going to be represented in um, just regular coulombs. So what we have to do is let's convert this value here to just regular, uh, I guess, to a normal number. It's the one that we can work with. So if we write it as 0 0.05 by 10 to the, remember, micro is minus 6, so it's divided by a million. Um, Faraday's. So all we have to do is just times this value to 0 0.4. So what we end up with is a 0 0.4 times 0 0.05 is the same as 0 0.02. Again, um, knowing this, it's important if you're going to sit the gaps out, you'd know these conversions with a click of a finger. It's important to know that because it makes the mathematics a lot quicker. So 0 0.02, um, and now we have to uh, write 0 0.02 by 10 to the negative 6 uh, coulombs. So it's important to note as well, a coulomb is the same as a Faraday volt. So it's the same, um, so it's the same unit. Uh, so uh, the reason why I say this is because in the future you might get GAMSAT questions that require you to manipulate Faraday volts or volt Faradays or whichever way you want to say it. Um, so just know that a coulomb can be represented uh, or charge can also be represented as Faraday volts. So um, we have this answer, but the answer in the stimulus is not represented in, uh, obviously, as 0 0.002 by 10 to the minus 6. So the obvious answer, just by looking here, has to be A. But how do we convert from 0 0.02 by 10 to the minus 6 to 2 by 10 to the minus 8? So remember, 0. Point, so let's just say 2 by 10 to the minus 6. So 2 by 10 to the minus 6 is the same as 0. So it's going to be 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. But over here we have an extra 2 zeros. So you know straight away that if we're going to add an extra 2 zeros, so let's add an extra 1, 2, 
you know straight away it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's going to be 2 to the power of minus 8. I mean, there's many other ways, again, to peel an orange. There's other ways you can uh, work through scientific notation, but find the way that works for you. So now if we move on to the hard part of this um, of this unit, I mean, it's hard because it requires a lot of conceptualization. If you can conceptualize what they're saying here, you get the correct answer. It is a lot of the arithmetic and, um, I guess, uh, the mathematics. You have to be very uh, sequential and diligent here um, and systematic, but we can work through it together. So it's saying that the percentage of charge that was transferred from C1 to C2 after the two parts were joined was closest to. So let's just write down the first thing we know. C1, therefore, has to have a charge of 100%. If we're transferring... From C1 to C2, let's say C1 has a charge of 100%. So we're told, if we take a look and write down our known values, so C1 has a capacitance of 0 0.05 microfaraday. C2 has a capacitance of 0 0.1 microfaraday. And we know the voltage for both is equal to 0 0.4. So the voltage is constant. So what we see here is that C2 has a capacitance that's twice C1. So C2 is two times C1, which means if we're gonna transfer charge from C1 to C2, C2 has to have twice as much charge as C1. So we can represent that as, so C1 as one, and C2 has to be twice as much. So you're probably wondering, wait, hang on, why isn't it one-to-one -one or another one? So if it was a one-to-one, -one, that would mean that C1 and C2 both have the same capacitance and the charge is going to be equal, which means it will be 50%, which is not true because the capacitance here is double for C2. It has to have, remember, if we look at the equation, so it was Q equals CV. If you double C, you double Q. So that means, because voltage is constant, that means we're gonna get double. So if we did a one-to-one, -one, it'd be 50% charge in C1 and 50% charge in C2, and that's incorrect. So we know straight away just by looking at the option, 61B is incorrect. So it has to be this ratio. So what goes into 100% three parts? Well, that's 33%. So if we do it this way, then C1 is 33%. C2 has to be double. So it's got to be 67%. So 33.333 or, I mean, 66, 67%. So let's just say 66 anyway, just for argument's sake. So whether it's 66, 67, um, the, the point is that our answer, so don't get confused here, because the options for A is 30%, you might straight away say, oh, it's going to be 30%. No, what it's asking is the percentage of charge that was transferred from C1 to C2. So we've, remember, started off C1 was 100%, and now C1 is 33%. So we've transferred 66 or 67% to C2. So with the question when it's asking how much was transferred from C1, we're looking for the answer that's closest to 67%. So what's left in C1 is 30%. So the answer A is incorrect. And what we're left with is either 90% or 70%. And 67 is closest to 70%. So the answer is C. And D is obviously just incorrect. It doesn't make sense. So you can see how, I mean, we didn't have to know anything about capacitance to answer these questions. We just had to know some simple mathematics, arithmetic, and how to manipulate, um, uh, I guess, our unknown known values into equation and just thinking about it logically and sequentially, systematically, how, um, the, how uh, I guess, the distribution of charge or distribution of capacitance uh, worked in this instance. Now, if you have more questions about capacitors or any, I guess, other physics-related questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.